Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. It is right that we exclude people uh, when they are going to radicalize or encourage extremism. I happen to disagree with her about Donald Trump. I think his remarks are divisive, stupid, and wrong. And I think if he came to visit our country, I think he'd unite us all against him. Conservative. Cameron of England calls Trump divisive, stupid, and wrong. Cameron ran as a conservative, turned out to be another Boehner. Another Boehner with a British accent. No, I didn't watch the debates last night. I took uh, 20 minutes. I watched the opening just to see Wolf Flitzer make a fool of himself. Watched to predict exactly what I said would happen. You didn't have to be a genius to know what they were going to do. Didn't I tell you that on Monday? Now, Mr. Trump, isn't it true you said that you wanted to ban all Muslims from America? Have you stopped beating your wife, Mr. Trump? Gee, Wolf, you're a real genius. Maybe you should get a Pulitzer Prize for that one. But I have all of the, you know, the hot spots from it. Big deal. But the biggest thing that came up in the debate, according to, and then I went off to a car show, by the way. I found it far more interesting to go to see Ferrari racing cars than listen to another bunch of men. You know, I, I'll be honest with you, bores the heck out of me. It's all hot air. It's nothing. Sound and fury. There's nothing there. Any one of those men on that stage, and I mean any one of them, even the idiot, Rubio, the ice cream man, would make a better president than the Harrod and Hillary Clinton. Any one of them would be better for the safety of America's children than the Harrod and called Hillary Clinton. But having said that, I was bored of it. I've heard it all before. Let's have the election already three months ago and get it over with. What a country we live in. How stupid can it get? They marched them out like show dogs to, to milk the audience and to get as much time as they could out of it. They marched them out one at a time like show dogs. What an embarrassment to live in America and see men let themselves be manipulated like that by men lower than, well, let's say lower than the average intelligence out there in the media. You know the media has destroyed America. You know it's people in the media who wreck the country. You know that. And yet here's the media now controlling who will be the next president. When have you last seen a debate with Hillary Clinton? Like, never? You're telling me that stooge from uh, New York, whatever his name is, the one who spits on himself? The old man on a soapbox? The, you know, I don't even remember his name. The, the, the mockery of himself. He's a self-parody. He has as much chance to become president. My dog has a better chance to be a president than that one. I don't even remember his name. I don't know. The one from Vermont, the socialist. I don't know his name. I don't want to know his name. I knew men like that in New York. It's why I fled New York 40 years ago. They were the kind of bad uncles that you couldn't stand. Garlic breath, point, poked you in the chest to make a point, held on to your lapel, spritzed you with garlic and a, a, a chopped liver breath. I don't know his name. I don't know his name. But, okay, we got to talk about it for a few minutes. I'll do it. I'll be glad to do it. By the way, you're listening to the Savage Nation. Fiorina, what was the big cross for? You know, you look, what does she have to show the cross for? What was that about? In a time of terror to show she's not a Muslim? We kind of knew that. Fiorina was a terrible CEO. Fiorina was fired in California because she was a bad CEO. Fiorina ran for the governorship in California many years ago. I was a local talk show host. She didn't get very far because she's for open borders. So what? who is she trying to pretend she is now? All right, whatever. It's just what it is. Now, Trump was not Trump last night. Trump was not Trump last night. He was the un-Trump. Steal that one. Or run with that one. He was the un-Trump last night. You know how I do Dr. Unsavage? I haven't done it in a long time. He was the un-Trump. He, he was Mr. Un-Trump. He, he was not shooting from the hip. He was very middle of the road. And as a result, I guess he's playing it safe now, which is smart. He's so far ahead, he doesn't have to be Trump anymore. He can be un-Trump. That's the truth. He could be un-Trump and sail right into the primary, you know, victory. That's unless it's rigged, and I think it's rigged. I'll go back to what I said Monday. It's all uh, a hall of mirrors. You're looking at a hall of mirrors. Hillary has been selected, in my opinion. Hillary has already been selected for the presidency, no matter what you may think. 
The system is so rigged and so rotten and so corrupt. I have no faith in it whatsoever. I know you don't want to hear it. I know you want to hear hope and this and that. I can't give it to you. Before the show, I was watching a uh, an argument in the Ukrainian parliament. I know it's funny. I liked it much better. I don't speak much Ukrainian, but I saw that one threw a glass of water in the other one's face. It took over two minutes for him to get steamed up at the other one, and he threw a glass of water in the face of the former prime minister. These are big men. They get angry. Their testosterone rages. None of them are like these, uh, I don't know, I, I got a word for it, but it's a family show. Now, the one thing Trump said uh, that I think is worth discussion and worth your time. By the way, while you were watching the debate, I posted something on my Facebook account that I must mention to you. Did, did anyone see it? Raise your hand if you go to my Facebook account. There's four fake ones and one real one. Uh, there's a lot of fan sites that are not mine. My site is the one of me with the hat from Government Zero. And here it is. Yes, I warned you the snake would do this in Government Zero. And yes, I am telling you to read the book to see what the snake has in store for us. And it is an article from the Free Beacon showing us that the snake in the White House granted three million green cards in April. The snake granted three million green cards in April without a blink from the electorate. We're watching these debates. Did you hear what I just said? I mean, the snake gave out three million green cards. Now, what do you think the snake is doing this for? Because there's jobs waiting for them? The snake is doing it to make sure that Hillary is selected again. You don't understand this. We have a rogue government. It's out of control. He should have been impeached a long time ago. And what is the point of my saying it to you? With Ryan on the other side, you think anything is going to happen when he just gave him carte blanche with the, uh, the, the budget? And what do you think the snake gave him in return? The Republicans sold themselves out again for a few dollars, for a few pieces of silver. They let the snake have all the money he needs to do anything he wants. And what did they get in return? They got the right to lift the ban on the oil import uh, export ban, first time in 30 or 40 years. And now they can sell oil abroad, which is a very good thing. That's what the snake gave them in return. So the oil industry, in other words, got something for letting the country go down the tubes even further. That's all. But I, most of you don't even know where the word down the tubes comes from. I, I encountered it a number of years ago in one of my books of short stories, a little-known book, not as big as Government Zero or Stop the Coming Civil War. One of my little books, like Psychological Nudity, a fine literary exercise, I wrote a story about a young man who invests his life fortune, his life savings, in the commodities industry. And in that story, he visits the commodities broker in a big building on Wall Street, and he invests his life savings, which at that time was $30,000. And the broker says, okay, it's gone now, it's down the tubes. Because in those days, the, the order was placed on a piece of paper and put into a pneumatic tube which sucked it down into the uh, actual brokerage room. Would you believe that? That's where the phrase down the tubes comes from. I don't know if you know that, but it's like throwing your money away. That means down the tubes. So there's one thing that Trump said. I know you don't follow me that well because it's hard for people in America to have more than one track running at any one time. We have one track mind, so if you have someone who speaks in six tracks in a sort of uh, whatever, it's very hard to follow me. I get that. That's why the show is so popular, because there are a few people who have six-track minds. Trump said, I am open to closing areas of the Internet. Now, that's worth talking about. And I'm going to play it for you. Trump says, I am open to closing areas of the Internet. So let's listen to this interchange in clip 2.0. Go ahead, please. You recently suggested uh, closing that Internet up, those were your words, as a way to stop ISIS from recruiting online. Are you referring to closing down actual portions of the Internet? Some say that would put the U.S. in line with China and North Korea. Well, look, this is so easy to answer. Uh, ISIS is recruiting through the Internet. ISIS is using the Internet better than we are using the Internet, and it was our idea. What I wanted to do is I wanted to get our brilliant people from Silicon Valley and other places and figure out a way that ISIS cannot do what they're doing. You talk freedom of speech, you talk freedom of anything you want. I don't want them using our Internet to take our young, impressionable, 
impressionable youth and watching the media talking about how they are masterminds. These are masterminds. They shouldn't be using the word mastermind. These are thugs. These are terrible people in ISIS, not masterminds. And we have to change it from every standpoint. But we should be using our brilliant people, our most brilliant minds, to figure a way that ISIS cannot use the Internet. And then on second, we should be able to penetrate the Internet and find out exactly where ISIS is and everything about ISIS. And we can do that if we use our good people. So let me follow up, Mr. Trump. So are you open to closing parts of the Internet? I would certainly be open to closing areas where we are at war with somebody. I sure as hell don't want to let people that want to kill us and kill our nation use our Internet. Yes, sir, I am. Now, I happen to agree with him because I said the same thing four weeks ago. I said, why does Twitter, why is Twitter allowed to let them use the superhighway of Twitter to plan our next, uh, their next terrorist attack? I said it on the show. So I'm not going to go back on my own statement to sound like I didn't say it. Why do they let people at Microsoft get away with this? What, for a dollar? For a higher dollar amount? Why don't they stop them? Why don't they force these people who have made trillions of dollars off the Internet? to use their companies to prohibit the Islamic slime from using this to destroy the West, I said four weeks ago on the show. But I'll bet many of you are diehard libertarians and you disagree with it. See, this is the problem, because if you are a didactic individual and you're not flexible, you'll say, well, according to my philosophy of uh, libertarianism, we don't want the government... Uh, reviewing anything on the Internet. We don't want the government involved. In it. Well, they're on it anyway. The government's on it anyway. What, what are you going to lose if the government looks at the Internet? Tell me what you're going to lose. Your girlfriend won't know what you're having for lunch tomorrow? Well, what are you putting on the Internet that you're so afraid somebody will find out? Your sexual preferences? They already know what they are. And secondly, you might meet a nice guy in the NSA. You never know. I mean, the fact is, if you let the government look into your Internet uh, postings, you may meet a nice date. You never know. They may find that they're in love with you. No, I'm in favor of it. I'm open to closing areas of the Internet. Anything that must be done should be done to stop the Islamo-fascists. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or Swiss America. Uh, an interesting question. Trump says we should control the Internet, that he should close it down. Oh, I didn't say the whole thing, close it down. Uh, I know that libertarians are going to stick to their uh, doxy and say, no, it violates my libertarianism. Liberals will say, how dare you? It violates the First Amendment. But, you know, you're not thinking clearly. We're, to we're, in, we're in war. We're at war now with the Islamo-fascists. They're winning. We're losing. One of the reasons we're losing is because we have fellow travelers in the federal government. There's no question about it in the minds of anyone who analyzes it. That's number one. Or well, let's say sympathizers, if you're afraid to go to the next step. You don't want to go to the next step and say fellow travelers and say sympathizers, okay? Put it any way you want. They have friends in high places. And so we're in trouble here. They're fighting a full-scale war against the West, and we're basically not doing very much in return. These are fake missions by Obama. He only got a little more muscular after Putin did something. In order to keep up with Putin, he tried to act like he was Teddy Roosevelt all of a sudden. So you got to do something to stop these people. you got to stop them from infiltrating us through the Internet, and I think it's a reasonable idea. The phone number is 855-407-282. Uh, I wish I could take your calls, but I'm disconnected from the server. Another technical day on the Savage Nation. So I'll read you Butch the Rooster. Sarah was in the fertilized egg business. She had several hundred young pullets and ten roosters to fertilize the eggs. She kept records, and any rooster not performing went into the soup pot and was replaced. This took a lot of time, so she bought some tiny bells and attached them to her roosters. Each bell had a different tone, so she could tell from a distance which rooster was performing. Now she could sit on the porch and fill out an efficiency report by just listening to the bells. Sarah's favorite rooster, Old Butch, was a very fine specimen, but this morning she noticed Old Butch's bell hadn't rung at all. When she went to investigate, she saw the other roosters were busy chasing pullets, bells are ringing, but the pullets hearing the roosters coming would run for cover. 
To Sarah's amazement, old Butch had put his bell in his beak so it couldn't ring. He'd sneak up on a pullet, do his job, and walk on to the next one. Sarah was so 